All right, folks, now that we have dug deep and crunched the numbers on the specs, uh, and let's take a look through these chargers and see, you know, how they stack up against each other. Before I do that, I'm going to address this one more time and one more time only, and then you're not going to hear me talk about it again. But I do want to say, you, you'll notice that the chargers I'm showing you are from Hobby King. And I told you in a, in a, in a recent video that Hobby King had contacted me and offered to send me some stuff. And so you might wonder about that a little bit. Uh, hey, I shop at Hobby King. A lot of us shop at Hobby King. I've shopped at Hobby King since I started in this hobby. And frankly, if it weren't for Hobby King, I wouldn't be in this hobby. Because when I wanted to get into RC Flight, I went and looked at how much a transmitter cost. And I looked at the Fatabas, and they were 600 bucks. And I was like, holy crap, I'm not going to spend 600 bucks on it. I don't even know if I'm going to like this. And then I found Hobby King, and I found the Turnigy 9X, and it was 60 bucks, And that's how I got into this hobby. Okay, uh, I'm sure a lot of us have stories like that, and I still shop at Hobby King to this day. So when I went shopping for chargers, I went to Hobby King because that's just what I what I do. And as I told you in the last video, 269 bucks for an eye charger for me personally, that math doesn't work out. I know other people disagree. So the fact that uh, Hobby King offered to send me some stuff, and the fact that you're seeing Hobby King here, that's not why you're seeing Hobby King here. You're seeing Hobby King here because that's where I shop, and that's where I'm shopping for a charger. Uh, and I'm never, never going to show you guys stuff just because a vendor sent it to me. And, and I will always try to disclose. Actually, I think I'm required by, like, the FCC to disclose when vendors do send me stuff. So, anyway, enough said about that. We're going to let that lie. Let's look at these chargers. If you are looking for a high-volt charger that can do the 4.35-volt uh, LiPos, then there are three that come across my radar. One is the AccuCell 680 watt. The next is the Turnigy Neutron charger. And then also, and this was not included on my spreadsheet, I only just discovered it uh, recently, uh, the Turnigy Mega blah, 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 high volt charger. None of the reactor chargers can actually do uh, high volt. And that seems like a real oversight in their line. They can be set to go up to 4.30 volts, but not 4.35 volts. Uh, you can intentionally miscalibrate them so they run a half volt high if you feel like it. Personally, I find that a little risky, but some people find parallel charging a little risky, and I do that, so that's your call. I, I would, I certainly would expect that the reactor would have a firmware update that would allow the 4.35 volt charging, but currently they don't do it. So if you're going to do the 4.35 volt charging, uh, between these three, that I gotta say, I mean the Neutron is 200 watts and it's 50 bucks, but the touchscreen display, I don't know, maybe I'm just used to the four button chargers. I, I, I've had an AccuCell 650 watt for a long time. I would, I would almost probably pick this one because I've had good experience with the AccuCell 650 watt. This one is 80 watts. It's not gonna charge as fast as this one at 200 watts. In fact, it's gonna charge substantially slower. If we take a look at our 4S comparison, the Neutron will do 4154 milliamp hour uh, at, at 2C. So basically it'll do it'll do 4000 uh, milliamp hours in a half hour. And the AccuCell 6 will do less than half of that. So if, if charge time is your concern and you're willing to spend 20 more bucks, the Neutron might be a good choice. Personally, I'm, I, I, I'd like to stick with the tried and true uh, and, and I might pass it up just because it's a new thing. It's, I'm unfamiliar with it. And something about the touchscreen just, I know this is dumb. Something about the touchscreen just reminds me of old, like, Palm Pilots. And I'm like, eh, I don't know. Oh, whatever. You, uh, you can decide for yourself. It, by the numbers, by the numbers, it's probably worth an extra 20 bucks because you get more, more than double the charge rate. Okay. So by the numbers, it's probably worth the extra 20 bucks to go with a Neutron. Uh, the AccuCell 680 watt is the, definitely the, the budget option. And then there's the Turnigy Mega Meter, and I haven't crunched the numbers on this, but 40 amps, uh, 13, 44 watts. The only kicker on this one is you're gonna need a really massive power supply, and we'll run down power supplies in a later video, but if you're not running this off a car battery, you're gonna need a really massive power supply to really run this at its, at its full capacity. And also bear in mind, that if you're not going to run it at 30 volts, 
your actual output is probably going to be much lower. It, it might be closer to the five or 600 watt range as opposed to the uh, 1300 watt range. But if you were looking for a higher end charger that could really push the amps uh, and that uh, could do HV, uh, this seems like a good choice. And at 128 bucks, what does that stack up against again in, in the reactor line? So it's pretty close to this, which is a two channel 300 watt, or this is nominally a thousand watts, but unless you're running it at like 20, 24 or 28 volts or something, it's really only 500 watts. Okay, so, so either of these would be something to compare against that one, although these ones do not do high volt, and that may be a deal breaker for you. It is really nice, though, that there is at least one high wattage charger that can do HV LiPos, uh, you know, stock. Okay, um, so fine. Uh, then if we set high voltage LiPos aside and we look at the reactor line, uh, it's interesting to ask yourself, how does this 250 watt reactor compare to the 200 watt neutron? Let's take a look there. And again, I'm just going to go right to this 4S table because I think that ultimately, at the end of the day, that's what tells the tale. And we can see that the Neutron 200 watt will do about 4,000 milliamp hours at 2C. So about 4,000 milliamp hours in a half hour. And the reactor 250 watt will do 5,000. Okay, so the reactor, well, it's got 50 more watts, right? So practically speaking, and, and you will realize that advantage even if you're running at 12 volts. So the reactor is going to do a little better. It has the traditional four button interface. All of the reactor products also have these sort of bonus features, if you will. Uh, external discharge, uh, brush drive, a foam cut, measure internal resistance has all these features. The neutron does not have the foam cut, the brush drive, or the external discharge. So something to think about. Uh, so it seems like if you don't need high volt, the reactor may be a better choice, unless you just love touch screens. If we then continue up the line, here is the 300 watt charger. And now we've moved from these hard buttons to these, uh, this style of button. And as I said before, I have, uh, I have a friend who has the reactor quad core. I, I normally am not a huge fan of these buttons, but they feel really nice and tactile on this. I, I don't mind them on this. They had, sometimes they feel a little squishy, like the buttons underneath are really cheap and cruddy, but these ones I, I didn't mind. I, I liked them okay, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't reject it based on that. Here we are. We're up to 300 watts for 65 bucks. And then we get to this, uh, and this. Actually, this is the one I want to do first. So this is a two by 300 watt balance charger. And it's basically just two of these stuck in a box together. In fact, these are completely independent. If you save a program memory on one of these, it isn't saved in the other one. And that's actually, I don't know, I guess you could see that as a plus because you could set them up with different sets of program memories. But I kind of wish they shared, and also the settings. If you set the cutoff voltage, for example, the input so you don't run your car battery dead, if you set it to like 11.3 volts, it's, you have to set it up on both of these. This is really literally like two completely separate chargers in a box together. So that's that's not ideal. I, I don't like that the best. Oh, you guys with the eye charger are going to tell me that, that, that. Oh, the eye charger doesn't do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A hundred bucks. Go, go. Give me a hundred bucks and I'll buy an eye charger. <laughs> okay. So, uh, so this is basically two of these in one. And in fact, 65 bucks, it's just about double the price. Okay. So, so that, you know, this should be an easy, you could, you could even decide I'm going to buy two of these instead. I'm going to take one to the field with me and leave one at home, or you could just do the same thing here. It's really literally, as far as I can tell, the same thing. Are there any feature differences between them? Here's the 300 watt, uh, and here's the two times 300 watt here. Let's scroll over and see if there's any feature differences between them. Um, the two times 300 watt does not have a USB port. Whereas the 300 watt one, it you can connect to the PC via a servo lead dongle. Some of these actually have a U proper USB port. This one you can connect to the PC, the, the single channel 300 watt, but you need the USB dongle. The two channel one, I believe, does not have USB or PC connect. It doesn't appear to be any kind of connector for it on the outside of the case. Uh, 
Interestingly, the manual does talk about PC connecting, but I think it's kind of the same manual for all of them. And then this one is the same thing, but with a built-in uh, power supply. So you can plug it straight into the wall. And again, whether that's a plus or a minus to you, by the way, this is single channel. So it's the same as this one, the 300 watt, but with a built-in power supply. Now, whether that's a plus to you or not, I don't know. I mean, it's nice to have it all in one, but you are paying 65 bucks for the 300 watt power supply. And if you take it to the field with you to run it off your car battery, it's just dead weight. And for about 25 bucks, you can get a 350 watt power supply off of Amazon and, uh, and come out ahead by buying this and the, the 350 watt supply off of Amazon. But then again, there's a lot to be said for having it all in a nice case, like just one, not like a power supply and then some tangle of wires and then your charger. And then, you know, there's a lot to be said for just having it all in one case and calling it a day. So this is actually the only one in the reactor line that has a built in AC power supply. OK, so if that's a if that's a killer feature for you, then this is the one you've got to buy. That's just it. But I think you really are overpaying for the power supply. Because, you, like I said, you can get a 350 watt power supply off of Amazon for 25 bucks, and uh, and I have one, and it seems fine. So, I mean, it hasn't lit on fire or anything. And I opened it up, and there were no obvious manufacturing defects in the soldering or in the anything like that. Occasionally, you get occasionally somebody gets one of those, and it's got a problem, and it lights on fire. But so you know, take your chances, I guess. All right. Uh, the last one here is a thousand watt 30 amp for 140 bucks. Now I think this one is a little misleading because you only get you need to feed it like 36 either 24 or 28 volts to get up to a thousand watts. If you're only feeding it 12 or 18 volts, you're not getting the full rated output. So I think if you don't intend to run this off a higher voltage supply, you should think hard about whether it's the right one to get. And maybe you could get the two two by three hundred instead, or get two separate three hundred watt ones and come out ahead. That's that's your call. And then finally, you got this one. This is kind of an odd beast because it's got four channels, uh, and they're all first of all they're all four independent. So you need to configure every single one of these separately, which is kind of annoying. But there you go. And the other thing is, uh, if you look at the output on it. If you think about just one channel, you can get up to 7,200 milliamps in a half hour, milliamp hours in a half hour. And if you run all four channels at the max, you can get up to 29,000. And that's, again, using 4S as the comparison, right? It is not limited by its input voltage at 4S. So if you want to run it at up to its maximum of, at up to its maximum of 28 volts, you, you can improve things. But if you're only running at 12 volts, it goes from 300 watts per channel down to 227 watts per channel, which is not too bad. So you could do okay at 12 volts. But the weird thing is here with this one, like if, if I had, if I have a bunch of batteries to charge, I'd almost rather use a parallel charge board and just one big charger because then I don't have to screw around with four different charger memories and whatnot. So I think the place where this one really shines is, number one, if you hate parallel charging, if you just hate it. But if you really hate parallel charging, I mean, if you if you work the numbers, you could buy four of these. Four times six is 240 bucks. So you come out a little bit ahead by buying this, I guess. Uh, the other thing is, it, where this might shine is if you have a bunch of different kinds of batteries. So if you have some 4S, some 2S, some 6S, and you want to charge them all up, when I do parallel charging, it's kind of annoying because if I want to charge the 3S battery in my transmitter and I want to charge the 2S battery on my goggles and I want to charge my 4S flight batteries, oh, and I have some high voltage batteries, some HV batteries as well, if I'm parallel charging, I can't do all of that at once. Whereas with this one, you could have a 3S, a 2S, and some 4Ss all charging at the same time. I also think this one would really shine at a flight field. You bring this to the flight field, you plug it into your car battery, and then everybody just, just sort of takes turns on it. Whenever a battery gets done, you plug it in, you start it charging, right? You don't have to wait for one to charge to get the next one going. And everybody who's running 3S or 4S or any different battery size can all share and, and take their turn. So I think 
if you had a flight field and you really wanted to help your flyers out, you could buy three or four of these and just set them up in a station and everybody could just cycle through if that was, you know, that would be a great use for this kind of charger, I think. But if you were just your, the average person who's going to buy a charger for yourself, I don't think this is the right choice. Again, unless you just hate parallel charging, I would almost rather see something like a 300 watt charger or maybe even a two times 300 watt charger, you know, and, and with some parallel charging. And I think that would probably be a better use of your money. All right, that's my rundown. Uh, uh, since I know you're asking, which of these would I buy? For high volt? Well, I mean, if money was no object for high volt, I'd buy this one. But a 1300 watt power supply is going to run you. Even if you buy a cheap one, it's going to run you around 100, 150, maybe 160 bucks. I don't know. I haven't looked recently. So I'm not sure I would buy this one for myself. But uh, if money was no object, I think this is the one I would get. Uh, and then maybe I would just get a little uh, something like this for maybe my, my secondary batteries. If money is an object, I would get this one. And it'd take a little longer to charge the batteries. I, oh, I might have to sit around for a little bit while the batteries charge compared to this one. But I like these four button chargers and I don't know, touch screen, oh, touch screen, just reminds me of my Palm Pilot. I don't like it. it kind of looks all plasticky. I know that's a stupid reason to decide, but whatever. You asked, I told you. Okay, there you go. I uh, hope that was helpful. Let me know what your picks are. And if there are other chargers that you think are good, like the R charger line, put them in the comments. Everybody reads the comments too, and people can get make their own opinions. All right. Hope that was helpful. Happy flying.